just found. Now for the camera. <laughs> I don't want all the money in rigs here. I just want all the money people paid for their tires. Howdy, howdy, we're still at San Hollow looking to get rowdy. We're headed up a nine rated trail called Chain Reaction. There are a few humps and bumps along the way to get to the first obstacle, which is considered the gatekeeper. A gatekeeper is an obstacle that foreshadows the rest of the trail. If you can't get up the gatekeeper, it's a good sign that you should turn around and not continue. This is a brand new, fresh RW1 chassis built by Jimmy's 4x4. Being a new build, it's got brand new SX2 stickies on it, and unfortunately, he's gonna be wheeling the new tire blues for the next five to 10 trips until he gets these suckers broke in. While he finds the right line, let me explain a little bit about the new tire blues. See, it's a bittersweet because new tires always look fresh and most aesthetically pleasing. The problem with the new tires are, they are like a good pair of work boots. They suck when you first get them and you have to break them in. The sidewalls are super stiff, which don't allow you to get proper flex and it doesn't lay down a good footprint. Also, all the lugs are not softened up yet and have sharp edges, which create less traction. The good news is it takes five to 10 trails of beating on them properly to get them to be good and broke in. Quick tip is when you get a fresh set of tires with thick sidewalls, pull the valve stems and drive around the block once or twice. Then on the trail, smoke the tires a little bit, just like this rig did to take down the hard edges of the lugs. Let's break this obstacle down. So you have the first waterfall, which you can see that I went far left on. And then once you go over that, you're gonna aim your front driver's side tire on the top of the next waterfall. And then you're gonna have your rears go to the driver's side as well to get on top of that waterfall, but you're only halfway up there and that's to go ahead and straddle the crack. Once you get yourself nice and straddled in this crack, you're gonna want to go ahead and continue on up the crack. You don't wanna turn driver too early because what that'll do is it'll pivot you, bail you out, and then you won't be able to get over the breakover. But if you continue up the crack like this and then start going driver, if you've got rear steer, you can just go ahead and manipulate to keep your rears above the crack. And once you're far enough along, you just turn into it and then you're at the top. We are now going up and out of the bottom of the wash for the next few obstacles due to the wash not being wide enough or the up and over just has better obstacles. To be honest with you, I'm not sure what happens if you keep going up the wash. So we're on chain reaction or broken chain. You think we would be better about trail names. We'll figure it out, I swear. That's a reminder to give this video a fat finger. Hey! This one is always a bit of a bear. You're going up a pretty gnarly climb and the toughest part is the straight up and down shelf that is on your driver's side. You end up riding that wall to the driver's side and squeezing your way to get your front tires up and over the shelf. Once you get there, you belly out pretty hard on your driver's side skid plate, which wants to hang you up. With a little throttle control and wiggling the wheel, you will get the rear driver tire to pop up and over, clearing your belly and getting you over the shelf. here and 
I'm getting sticky. You're welcome. I knew you wanted to know about that. I want to point out again that most of these trails are doable by a drag axle car. There are very few rear steer only trails and lines. Rear steer makes things quicker, easier, but is not a must have to hit these trails. If you haven't noticed, Virgil and the White Rock Lizard is always with us and does almost every trail on a drag axle car. He is a great driver and there are a lot of times he makes things look easier than the rear steer cars due to his lightweight, short wheelbase, and narrow axles. This is one of Virgil's specialties. When his rear gets bound up or he needs to get it to move a little bit, he will put it in rear dig and then his rears will spin a little bit while turning the front tires. With the front tires not moving, this forces the chassis to move back and forth depending on how you turn the wheel. This hat gives you an alternative to be able to move that rear axle a little bit to get a better position without rear steer. Those tires are really getting a proper break in and they're starting to hook up. Man, that thing's got a spicy motor in it and I love the sound of it when it's getting rowdy. This is one of the hardest offshoots on Chain Reaction. It's just such a jagged, crusty crack with loose dirt and rock all throughout it. I had done this crack before and after all the crack that I've done this trip, I figured I was a master cracker. But it turns out, I wasn't all I was cracked up to be, and fell right in. As I sit there, I was able to locate the problem as to why this happened. The issue occurred between the steering wheel and the seat, aka driver error. We're doing cardio on the trail. They're wheeling. All the things are happening. And you are liking the video, hey! We have two obstacles left on this trail and Chase is lining up to the first one. This one is rad because it's like a waterfall but with a big horseshoe at the top of it. Because it's a little narrower than our buggies, you have to line yourself up just right. Otherwise, it will cause your tire to fall in and throw your buggy on its side. But if you keep your tire sidewalls pinched in between the horseshoe just right, your sidewalls will get a lot of bite and pull you over the top. Here's what this obstacle looks like from inside the buggy. This is the second and last obstacle on this trail. This one is super rowdy. This wall is so steep that if you stop, you'll slide completely back, so you have to hit it with your purse to shoot up it. The catch is, the rock cropping on the top left, well, you have to hit it with your driver's side tire and hope you go over it and not backflip off the obstacle. Key to this obstacle, you wanna launch up and keep a steady throttle towards the top to keep from hitting that rock crop too hard, but have enough momentum to get you over it. Here's what it looks like from inside the buggy. the money in rigs here I just want all the money people paid for their tires <laughs> what's up guys we're at San Hollow we heard that they're doing a crawl in theater that's where you got to crawl up to the obstacle and they use the back of the obstacle as the screen it's gonna be really cool but me and Colby heard about it we're having a daddy-daughter date night we're taking you along Colby are you stoked yeah! <laughs> check this out this is rad That was rad, it's 
it's like a massive canyon, just barely enough for the buggy. What a fun way to go see a movie. All right, we're out here. We're at the drive-in theater, the crawl-in theater. It's freaking awesome. The view, you can see all of town. There's fireworks, a screen on the wall. We're just watching uh, Talladega Nights, doing a little daddy to 108 night. We're having a freaking blast. This is so sick. After hearing about the crawling theater put on by Trail Hero, which is pretty cool that they do events all year long and not just during the main Trail Hero event, Jess was too cold and kept warm at the camper, and I took the opportunity to take Colby out for a daddy-daughter date night that she really wanted to do at the crawling theater. Let me tell you, this was as cool for me as it was for Colby. Drive-ins were dying as I was growing up and was only able to go to one or two before they faded out. To be able to take Colby to one that was extra special because we got to crawl to the location and it was super rad that she got to experience something I thought she never would. And in a way that was way more special than just an old school drive-in theater. While we were out there, we ran into Michael Brunsini, one of the local legends and instantly planned for a morning ride. All right, we're back at it again. Today we got some locals out here. We've got Woody, uh, we've obviously got Wang Gang with us. We've got the Rec family. We've got Virgil over here and the Rock Lizard. And then we got Michael Brunsini and his kid. I don't know if you can see it, I'm looking right into the sun. But we're about to go tear up, I believe, Broken Chain. So we'll see you on the trail. Look at what I just found. Light. Oh yeah, bring it in. Back it. Yeah, buddy. If it looks like the same obstacle that we were on on Chain Reaction, it's because it is. Both trails use the same gatekeeper, but right after is where it forks. Hence the reason why it's called Chain Reaction and the other is Broken Chain. First up, we've got Michael's son. We don't wheel with very many people who have their kids with them, and it was way cool hopefully seeing what our future looked like for Colby when she's ready for a buggy. Next up, we've got another local legend out here, Woody. If it looks like these guys know what they're doing, it's because they do. Michael and Woody both run We Rock comps and are out here in San Hollow pushing limits on the regular. As much as I love the dangerous desert, I'm quite envious of them having such a great wheeling spot in their backyard. This is the fork between Chain Reaction on the left and Broken Chain on the right. We are taking a big fat right and heading up Broken Chain, which is rated 12, much harder than Chain Reaction. If you notice the passenger rear tire not moving as he turns through this corner, it's because he has cutting brakes, which allow him to lock up individual tires to help him pivot and turn sharp around corners. Very common on comp style cars. Well, we got halfway up the trail and I lost my uh, winch controls. I have no idea why. Buttons just decided to poop themselves. Oh, see? Another piece. Another piece just fell out, so we lost the winches. Got a little master leak here. So we're just gonna plug along, get through this trail and uh, wrap up this nice, easy Sunday drive.
This is always a very fun obstacle and I usually get right up this sucker. But when I get towards the top, my passenger rear starts dangling quite a bit, which causes my front to unload because I didn't have control of my suck down winch to limit it from unloading all the way, which made it feel super squirrely. I took a backup to get that rear axle more squared up on the crack to level me out. It's amazing how losing one of your controls can affect how much your buggy wheels. I had such a good time wheeling with the Brasinis, but due to a driveline yoke snapping, it cut the trail short for him. Having a father and son wheeling together with two capable drivers and rigs is so rad. They were able to pull the driveline out of the way and pull him off the trail. I look forward to wheeling with these guys as soon as possible. Broken Chain is a classic trail that builds up harder and harder and leaves the best for last. The last obstacle is completely vert and has a couple bumps and notches in it to throw you for a roll backwards situation. This top line is all about getting on the right line and then carrying a small amount of momentum and committing. I've seen this obstacle on many of off-road fail reels due to how easy it is to miss the line by just a hair. No suck down, I had a good feeling that my front end was going to want to unload, but I figured I'd line up to it and see how it felt first. Sure enough, the front end was super light and I'd be rolling the dice if I were to commit. Luckily Woody is a rad guy and manually spooled up my winch, <laughs> taking up the slack and limiting the unload for me to try it again. The Woody Winch 9000 worked like a charm and I was able to commit and crawl right out, ending this wheeling trip with the rubber side down. The best way to support this channel is by giving the subscribe button a little skiddly do, diddle the notification bell, give this video the fat finger, and leave a dirty little comment below. As always, thanks for watching.